again. Hello, students. We are here again for another interesting topic for SS1. Our topic today says classification of crops. You know, we have different types of crops, and we have to classify these crops based on how long they live before they die. Classification based on how long they live before they die. Then another classification is based on their uses. We use different crops for different things. For man's use, for the nation's use, for animals' use. Different parts of these crops are used for different things. We have to know them. Then, another classification is based on the arrangement of their leaves. So, like I told you, our topic says classification of crops. We are starting with classification based on how long they live before they die. On this classification, some crops produce their food just once within a year. And then once they produce their fruits and you harvest them, they die. That is the end of that crop. It will not produce fruits or food again. So such crops are called annual crops. Anana, can you give me an example of any of these crops that we produce crop food once and once you harvest it and that is the end of the crop? Yes. Jopadin, yes. Good. So examples are things like maize. Once the maize grows, you plant it, it grows, germinates, produce leaves, flowers, and the fruits, the cob, you harvest it. It will not produce cobs again. That is the end of it. It will die. The millet, and so on. Classification based on how long they live. So this first group are the group we call the annual crops. Annual means year, one year, annual. Then the second classification is based They produce fruits, they plant them, they grow, they produce fruits. Within two years, they use the first year of their life cycle to grow, mature. Then during the second year, they produce fruits. So we say the first year is for their vegetative growth, and then the, during the second year, they produce fruits and food. We call this group the Bayanwa crops. Bayanwa, two years. Their life cycle completes in two years. Example are the ginger. The lettuce, some species of cassava, the carrots, so these are the bayanwa. Then we go to the third group, we call the perennial crops. 
Repeat after me. Yes. Pere noir crops. These are plants or crops that complete their life cycle in several years. Several years. They will grow, produce a vegetative growth, their leaves, their roots, the stem, flowers, and so on. Then after so many years, they produce fruits and food. Typical example is the mango. Some mango can last up to five years, some six years. The orange, the plantain, the sugar cane. These are perennial crops. Then we have another group we call the ephemeria crops. Ephemeria. Ephemeria crops. These are crops which complete their life cycle two or three times in a year. So when you plant them, they grow vegetatively, produce leaves, flowers, and so on. Then they produce fruits. You have the fruits. Those crops will still be alive. Then they produce fruits again two times before they finally die. Typical example is the tomatoes. We call them the ephemeria crops. So can you give me an example of annual crops? Good. Bayanua crops. Good. Perennial crops. And then the ephemeria crops. Good. So this is classification based on how long they live. Then we have another way of classifying crops. This classification now is based on their uses. Which part of the plant do we make use of? There are some plants we make use of their different parts. So this classification is based on the parts of the crop and what the crop produces. So this classification is based on one, we have a group we call the cereal crops. Which group are the cereals? They are mostly grass-like crops and they provide grains rich in carbohydrates. They produce grains. That thing they produce, that seed they produce, we call them grains. And they are rich in carbohydrates. Example, the maize, the rice, the millet, the wheat. Remember, we say they are grass-like crops, but they are edible. When you see them growing in the farm, they look like grasses, but they are edible. They are not grasses. That the cereal crops. Then the second group are what you call pulses. Repeat after me. Yes, pulses. Or we can call them legumes. Legumes. The legumes, they are rich in protein. Very rich in protein. And they have nodules in their roots. When you uproot them from the ground, you look at the roots, you will discover nodules. In these nodules, we have nitrogen-fixing bacteria. 
this nitrogen fixing bacteria fix nitrogen to the soil while other crops are absorbing nutrients from the soil the legumes fix they reach the soil with nitrogen the legumes they are rich in protein protein rich food examples are the granules the cowpea the soya bean the bambara nuts and so on legumes then we have another group we call the fruit crops fruit crops these are crops that are supply vitamins and mineral salts they supply vitamins and mineral salts to the body example the sweet orange the pawpaw the apple what we normally call odara you know odara yes it's a fruit crop so they are under this group and so on and so forth fruit crops then we have the next group the roots and tubers roots and tubers so the roots and tubers are rich in carbohydrate example typical example you are familiar very very familiar with them the cassava the yam the cocoa yam the irish and sweet potatoes so they are store they store their food under the ground the roots and tubers we go to the next group the vegetable crops vegetables vegetables so when we say vegetables some of you think only is the those crops that we eat their leaves no there are some vegetables the edible parts are not only the leaves there are other parts of them but they are vegetables so they are rich in vitamins and mineral salts typical example are the okra so these vegetable crops we eat them raw some of them most of them we eat them raw or we bleach them a little before we eat you don't apply so much heat on them no so you can eat them raw example the tomatoes the okra the onions the amaranthus species when i say amaranthus you know what i mean the green leaves so they can be eaten raw or they can be bleached carrot take note carrot is a vegetable but it is a vegetable root vegetable root vegetable because it stores the food on the ground so it is a vegetable carrot is not a root crop it's a vegetable take note very very important okay the next group is the beverage crops the beverage crops are used we use them beverage to prepare food drinks we use them to prepare food drinks example the cocoa the coffee the tea then we have the next group the spices spices this group they are not food as such but we use them to add flavor to food they give taste to whatever you are preparing flavor to food example the ginger pepper the onion the garlic 
the turmeric. So they add flavor to food, the spices. Then the next group, the drug crops, drug. This group, they are crops used for making drugs. We use them to make prepared drugs that we use for treatment when we are sick. Example, the scent leaf, what we call nchuangu, the scent leaf, the tobacco. They are the drug crops. Then another group, we have the fiber crops. Fiber crops, fiber. These are crops for making clothes. We use them to prepare clothes. They are not edible. We use them to make robes. Clothes, robes. Example, the kenaf, the cotton, the scissor, the hemp, the jute. So we use them. Out of them, we get wines that we use in making clothes in our industry. These are the crops that supply us with raw materials in our industries. Then the next crops, the oil crops, the next group, oil. From them, we get oil, vegetable oils that we use for our domestic use and for our industrial uses. Example, the oil palm, the soya bean, the sunflower, the melon, the granuts, the coconut, and even cotton. So these crops supply us with oil that we use for our domestic use and then for our industries. Then we have the next group we call the latex. Latex crops. Latex. Latex. Okay. The latex crops. They provide latex for making plastics and industrial uses. Example, the rubber. Typical example is the rubber. We get latex liquid that comes out of it and we use them for making our plastics even tires and so on mattresses and so on so these are classification based on the uses the part of the plant that we use for our, both our industrial uses and then for our domestic uses then we have another pla uh, classification based on morphology classification based on morphology this classification is talking about the arrangement of the plant structure the structure of the plant especially the leaves the arrangement of the leaves some crops, one, they have broad leaf. We call them broad leaf crops. They refer to crops whose leaves are broad and they have network venation. Network venation. Yes, their leaves, if you look at their leaves, leaf of a mango tree, you see lines crossing each other that is network just like net network venation these are broad leaves with network venation potatoes the cowpea the mustard the tobacco these are plants with such leaves then the second group of these classification, 
based on morphology. We have crops that have narrow leaves. The leaves are narrow, parallel, venation. The, the veins, they have lines, straight lines that will not cross each other, just straight. Parallel venation. And the leaves are narrow. They are not as broad as the other group. Typical example is the rice. If you see rice, you see the leaves. You see the arrangement. The onions, the maize, the sugar cane, the ginger, the elephant grass. If you look at the leaves of these plants, you see how narrow they are, and then the lines are parallel. None will meet each other. Parallel venation. So, students, we have discussed about classification of crops. First of all, we talked about how long they live, classification based on life cycle how long they live before they die. Another one, classification based on uses, the part of the plant that we use and what we use them for. And then the next classification based on the arrangement, the structure of the leaves and the arrangement of the leaves. So I hope you can now classify any crop you see. You can classify where that crop belongs based on the uses, on the arrangements, or how long the crop can live before it dies. So I would like you to do the following. Classify crops based on how long they live. Explain the different classes of crops, different classes. Whether they, uh, they live one year, two years, or three years. How long they live before they die. Crops like cereal, legumes, the oil crops, the latex crops. Okay. Then another, explain what these crops are used for. What do we use oil crops for? What do we use legumes for? And what do we use cereal crops for? So that's the end of our lesson. I hope if you have any question, you reserve it in the next class, you ask your questions. Remain safe at home and read your books. Thank you.